I want to learn two things together with the Chevra that I think are, that to me are very much Menyan Diyayma. Things that are on our mind. Obviously, the Matzvin Kla Yisrael is dominating all our minds. We're part of it with people and the people that's going through difficult times. I want to share two thoughts, two tired thoughts that I think are encouragements to us, to our families, to, and to our people. After Yaakov Avinu has the fight with Sarei Shal Esav, so the Malach says to Yaakov Avinu at the end of the fight, Lo Yaakov Yeyomer Oid Shimcha, your name's no longer Yaakov Kim Yisro. Why is he called Yisro? Ki Sarisa Emeli Kim Vimanashim, you have fought with angels, Eli Kim means Malachim, Vimanashim and human beings, Vatuchal. Now, how does the Chevre translate Vatuchal? L'chayr, it means that you succeeded. L'chayr Vatuchal, see, if you say it means you survived, that you came out alive, then Rev. Isaac Sher's cash is not so stark. How did the Chevre translate Vatuchal? L'chayr, the mashmois here is that you were victorious. And Rashi says, who is the Anashim? That Lekim is Sarei Shalaysav. You fought with Sarei Shalaysav and you pinned him. And Beseder, you pinned him down because it says, Shalchenu ki Allah Shachar. So you won that, Vatuchal, that you beat Sarei Shalaysav. That seems apparent in the Psukim. Mm-hmm. Who is the Anashim? Says Rashi Esam Belovan. Now, Lovan Zichar, we'd have to give the victory to Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov leaves wealthy. Yaakov leaves with his wife and children, and Lavan doesn't get the wife and children. He says goodbye to Lavan. We can hear calling Yaakov victorious with his encounter with, with Lavan. But with the Esav to save Atuchal, that Yaakov Avinu had any victory, there was no victory to be had. He didn't have a victory here. He survived, but there was no victory. And Rev. Isaac Sher asked that why would it say on the love, why would it say on Esav, Vatuchal, and the Malach Paskind, he's called Yisrael, Kisarisa im Eloikim vim Anashim. You fought with angels and with men. Anashim, plural, is love on the Esav. Vatuchal, and you emerge victorious. L'chaira, to love, to love, and we could hear victorious. To Esav, there was no victory. He was machnia tremendously to Esav. That's the cash that Rav Isaac shared. Yes, like L'chaira, an honest, strong... Because he was dead by the way, but then he was dead by He survived, Chach. Chach... He went from being with nothing. So he had so Ravabi says, but even that he gave Esav a lot of stuff. Like in his in his entangle in his battle with Esav, you don't find victory. The fact that the Jews survived, there's a proof that there. So Iran says our survival, the Batuchal Mechatesu, we won. Rav Isaac Sher learns that Batuchal is a victory. And and asks this Kasha, Iran says our survival that we carry on. I, I want to I wanna share his terrets because I think I, it's, not, it's not a cute kasha, it's not a cute terrets, it's the truth, and it's talking to us. It's talking to us. Right, it's this, accu- this, was, this was said before his encounter with Esau, is that not right? This, uh, this statement, he's recently from Anash Batuchal, is said before his encounter with Esau, is that not right? Because right after it says, he, it says, Vayisa Yaka Yveena, Vayabin Esau Bavi so did he even have the encounter yet? Is the Vatucha that he got the brachas from Esav? I don't. But it's talking about that, that there was a that there was a fight. That there was a fight. That you fought, and he calls him a name. With that, but the Sara is him Eloikim. Esav Lavan is the fight. So Rebezi says the fight didn't happen yet. That could be a Nevoah. That's a Nevoah. He will win, but he didn't win here. So maybe Rebezi says once it's a Nevoah. Maybe it's a Nevoah. What will be? Mm. 
Yesh Ladin, this ca- the cash is there's something, what's happening here that he fought Esav and won on Yaakov Avinu. In Yaakov's lifetime, we don't find a victory over Esav. Now, Rav Ezi says they didn't even have the battle yet, okay? Later on, there'll be a battle. But you don't find Yaakov beating Esav unless it means stealing the Bechairah. You don't find Yaakov beating Esav, and he gets a bracha, he gets a statement, he's called Yisrael, you fought with human beings. Reb Chaim, we asked the Kasha, the Reb Isaac shares Kasha, that Yaakov is called Yisrael because he fought with angels and with human beings and one, plural human beings, who are the two, Lavan and Esav. You don't find he ever beat Esav in his life. Now he did get the brachas, but Esav came powerfully and Yaakov was machni and survived. Yet it says, Vatuchal, he emerges victorious. There's no victory against Esav. So I, I want to I wanna share this because it's, it's occupying space in this brain and it probably shouldn't. But a lot, and I'm, I don't know if it shouldn't, it should, it's the truth. And, and I'm sure many of us are trying to think in our own matzav right now, the situation that we find ourselves in, what victory looks like. What's the end game? We eliminate Hamas and then so somehow, but, but the, are other people gonna still fight? Like what, what's, so you have, to, you have pictures of what the end looks like. And it's a question that any think, any, all of us that are part of a nation, it's normal, we're thinking about and we want to live Bishal, we, we want to we we live as Klal Yisrael. And it has to be, in my mind, the answer has to be the end game is that we're Am Yisrael. The end game is we're us, a nation of beautiful people, of loyalists to Hashem, of Abbas Hashem, of Abbas Yisrael, of Abbas Atayra, in uplifting a nation that's true to its essence. Rachmanim, Baishanim, Gaimlei Chasadim. The end game has to be where us. And Rav Isaac Sher said here that Yaakov beat Esav as the Pshat, that he remained Yaakov. The Vatuchal is that he remained Yaakov, that's the victory. He speaks out, he speaks out more Pratius, that, that, that the Kavay that he was naig to Esav was big in Yanim. It wasn't just like we look at it like he flattered Esav, there was big in Yanim and we could think about what that was and what that means, but that he was able to be Mechabit Esav. That he was able, I hear people talk, I'm not coming, I have no power, I hear people like say things, you know, about let's get rid of the anger, you know, different lines. The end game for us, and anger is justified, we, our people were hurt and there's anger. The end game is we should be yidden. But y- everything that it means to be a yid. We should be people, by the way, to the Ummahs that are kind and elevated and sweet. We should be Yidden. We should be Yidden that when we go places, anywhere we go, people say Yidden are kind. Yidden are thoughtful. We should be Yidden is the end game. We should be Yidden that when we go on a Cholomaya trip anywhere, we're people that exude goodness because we're the Am Hashem. So we should exude who we are. Rav Isaac Sher says the Vatu Chaliz that Yaakov was Yaakov. After an encounter with Esav and battles and wars can make people angry and make people belligerent and, and, and bring out bad things wars can bring out. The vic- you know what the victory is? People, people spoke about that beautiful gathering in Washington. That beautiful gathering where Am Yisrael was Ma'aged came together. People said, they said policemen and people said they got more thank yous that day they've gotten in their whole careers. That's what it means we win. We win that we're Am Yisrael and we're kind and caring and wonderful and we're more, we're, we're more Klal Yisrael. That's the only victory we know of. We're different, than, we're different than many Ummahs, where victory is, we can win and we could lose. Because if we win the battle, but we're a tougher people, we're a harsher people, we're meaner, we're, we're, more, we're, we're more aggressive, we show, so then, then we didn't win. The Vatu is that Yaakov was Yaakov, or Isaac Sher says. He says that the cover that he was Nayi was a big part of the victory, that he was able to be Nayi, 
the right thing and the right covet to Esav, because that's what he was supposed to do and be. And he was supposed to show Esav that wasn't what Esav was worried, what's going to be with his standing. You took the Bechayra, and he saw Yaakov was not covered. That wasn't the victory, there no Sheikhs. And Yaakov, Rav Isaac Sher speaks this out. Rav Vigdor Miller's Rebbe, Rav Isaac Sher. <laughs> From Slobodka, that's the Vatuchal of Esav, of Yaakov Avinu over Esav. I think, I think for us, like this is the Varm Shuta, and Avada, we want victories. Avada, we're coming to a Chag of Hanukkah, we don't celebrate, we beat them, we celebrate when we rested. We light the Menorah, we celebrate the thing after. When, the, the, we can win and we could lose. We could we could win wars and, and we didn't lose if we're not more hidden and, and acting like hidden and giving off what a yid is. That's 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 the question of victory by us. If we very much express and a yid is 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 mamishtarka yid, if that's what comes out, if it's Megala well after the fight that we're still looking at other yidn as our brothers, that, that's Vatucha. Because Yidin won out, and we're acting like Yidin, and we have the Roman was of Yidin, so then it's Vatuchal. Then and only then is it Vatuchal. So that was the first, the first thing I wanted to share on the sugyas of the parasha that's obviously involved the sugyas that we're living through in our lives. The second Indian goes back to last week's parasha. And I want to propose a theory to the Hevra. The B'nai Lavan. In these two battles, you have Lavan and Esav. Yaakov Avinu hears the Bnei Lavan talk, and they say the funniest thing. Yaakov Avinu hears Lavan kids talking. They say the most bizarre thing. Lakav Yaakov is kol asher Lavinu. Yaakov stole from our fathers. May asher Lavinu asa is kol all the dignity, everything that he has, he stole from our tata. That's the dumbest line in the world. The, the reality, an open psukim, is Yaakov worked very hard. He worked yoyim, he worked laila, he worked in the heat, he worked in the cold. Lovam was trying to trip him. Hechlef es maskorte aseris meinim. Tens of times, Lovins try to cheat him. And despite all of Lovins' effort to swindle and steal everything of Yaakov, Yaakov survives and thrives. And in this dumb, this peculiar, this silliness, the B'nai Lovin said, Yaakov stole from our father. It's just stupid. Why does the child record it? Yaakov heard it, and there's no nafkamin in the story. Yaakov hears Lovins' children saying it. Yaakov sees Lavan doesn't like him, and Hashem says to Yaakov, leave Lavan's house. Of what importance? Literally in the story, it's irrelevant that he hears B'nai Lavan saying such a stupid thing. Why does the Torah record it? It's just nonsense, gibberish. Lavan's kid said he stole. Mazel tov, gezun Weirdos, stam. Now I'm not asking why they would say such a thing. They say, people say, you know, jealousy. Why would the Torah record such a silly thing? But of course it becomes so much more curious when all the years of our lives is what the Goyim say. The most famous anti-Semitic book in the world. You're supposed to say the name, the protocol. I don't know if you're supposed to be a medrash for sure, but the anti-Semitic book of the world. And the whole claim is, is we run the banks, we run, what they're saying is you stole from us, you steal from us. Our money, it's a pella. What B'nai Lavan said by Yaakov Avinu remains what the Goyim say, Ad why are they saying that? Now it's easy to just say it gets under our skin, but we stole from who? We work hard, we, we, we what's happening? What's happening? Now, Especially and when we hear a guy say something, we hear God talking. Yaakov Avinu says to Esav, I don't see you, I see God. I just see Hashem, I don't see you. What's going on here? What's, what's happening? What are we hearing? What, what is, and the Torah is madgish that Yaakov hears B'nai Lavan say this, that your wealth comes from us. What do we hear? It's just nonsense. Then the guy even said, I don't think we, do you control the bank? Do I? 
Do you control the bank? Who, like, what do they say? I asked myself, the guy, would they control all the banks? I, I want to call up some of my friends, man. Does, does the Hevra not? I, I work, I, I have my stuff in Webster Bank. I think it's run by guy who seems to be fine people. I don't know, unless really a Yid owns Webster Bank. I, I never heard, so, what's happening? What are they saying? So it's just shtos, shtuyot. And all the anti-Semites say it, what are they experiencing? So it's just stand built on all stupidity. So why do these ears have to hear it? Why do your ears have to hear such nonsense? And by the way, Yaakov had to hear it also. Stupidity, utter nonsense. For, for what? Yaakov's ears just get clogged with nonsense. He shouldn't hear it. It shouldn't be said and he shouldn't hear it. And record it forever. And it can't be. This is what the Goyim say for all eternity. I, all eternity, for all the years of Golos, this is what they're busy. They're still saying it. What's happening? It's just this like silly line that forever, the B'nai Lovan put it, they wrote the book. You know, there's like big talk who wrote the book. B'nai Lovan wrote this book accusing us of the accusation that remains. It's very curious to me. I don't know Pshat Shemi, I want to offer a theory. And the theory I want to say is that all the things we go through are meant letoivaisenu, are meant for our goodness. All the difficulties, Hashem's working with us, with our people, it's schwer. It's difficult, real difficulties, and he's working with our people, whether it's to unite us, whether it's to remind us we're Yidin, whether it's to cause tshuva, tefillah. I don't know, but Hashem's working with us. And it's very shy to me, Yaakov Avinu hears that the Ashiras that you had was made by the Goyim. You took it from us, is there sense? That what you have was the experience and what you have and the specialness, it was all on our backs. We were players in your stories of greatness. As Kola Kovet May Asher Lavinu us as Kola Kovet It came from our Father, all this honor that you have. All the glory that you have, it came from our Father. We have this sense that the greatness you have was stolen. Where did they come from? What to say such a silly thing? The answer is there's, a, there's, a, there's an akud of emes. There's something they're sensing that has an akud of emes. The akud of emes is what we, what we are and what we have in our beauty has come from all the people, from all our enemies and all the difficult situations that we have encountered and found ourselves in has produced who we are. And that's what they're sensing. Of course, it comes out in a funny way. They say, you stole our money. You, they, they're sensing something that's a truth and we're supposed to hear it. By Yishma, as Dibri B'nai Lovan, Yaakov hears such a chizuk at the end of his stay of, by Lovan. The end of 20 years that could be viewed as difficult, painful years, he hears them say that Yaakov took all from our father, and it's from our father that he has this kol All the dignity, all the beauty that you have came from our father. You've stolen from us. Now, of course, they're translating it wrong. Of course, they're translating. It doesn't, the voice and the inner truths don't, don't come out to them. They don't know what they're, what they're feeling, but they're feeling something. And to the guy, it comes out, you must have stolen from us. The cover that they're sensing and the greatness, it has to be in the way they view at Tzlacha. And there's a reality that the truth, that the beautiful nation that we are, the beautiful people, that's gone through a lot, that's been through a lot, that's been, that's been through, put a lot through from the Umayyads, who dan us and judge and, and, and attack in all different ways, and then they see a beautiful people, a successful people, and they just sense all the cover that you had was taken from us. They correctly sense that it was, it was from you guys. It was from you guys, from the Germans, from the Spaniards, from all the historical nations who started up. Hamas has joined the club and it's kola kovet azeh. 
of an Ummah that's elevated, of an Ummah that's loyal to Hashem, of an Ummah that's being, that's, that's growing, that's coming together, that's, that's being mechazek in all in Yanam of Avoidus Hashem, that's kol hakover hazeh, we took from them. We did, we stole from them. Just not in the way that, it's, that, that they express, but there's a spiritual truth that perhaps they're tapping into. So I wanted to share, to me there's a, there's a chizuk from those words, from words that we can hear as a nonsense. Even the way they hold the yid accountable, I watch what they're saying, they talk about being more careful, what they, they saying, nobody talks like this, so stop it, you could get very upset, or you could hear the Ummah saying, we hold you to a level that no nation, there's no such thing in war. There's no such thing. You'll, I never, we're, we're all, we're, we're around decades, all of us. We never heard of such a conversation. You're fighting a war, they're hiding places. So we're saying there. We're hearing the Nahrayis of responsibility of Akla Yisrael. I don't just hear as the guy talking, and the guy uses it to, to knock and attack, but they're saying something. And the message from Hashem is we're a precious Ummah, we have to be Akla Yisrael. We have to emerge as an Ummah Taka that's wildly careful about human life. As an Ummah that's caring, that's careful, we're watching scenes of the hostages come home. Beautiful scenes of the whole city goes out, kids shooting fire. Those are meant for our eyes. I remember when first the hostages were taken, there was like a lot of warnings. Don't see, don't know. Cute, yeah, Vada, try not to see. Don't let your kids see. Hashem put pictures in our face, in our minds, that are there of a year taken away. We were, Hashem wanted us to know, but I'm not saying to look, don't look, fine. Don't look, saying don't look is the biggest looking ever. So we all have the picture in our minds that was wanted. It was ugly. A yid held in, by somebody else was ugly to us all. It's ugly and ridiculous. Then the yid coming back. It's by us, he's by us. It's beautiful. The whole city comes out, he's by us. Every shul, every yid comes in. There was a picture for a reason. He's by us. Every yid walks into a city, he's by us. She's by us. That has to be felt. That's pushit. These things aren't accidents. So then we were taught something. It was ugly, somebody's not by yons. We, Hashem put the pictures in our mind. All of us have a picture, it's disgusting. It's so ugly, they're tortured by others. And he's back to us. She's by us. Here she's safe. Here she's wanted. Here the person is celebrated. That's what Hashem gave to our nation. That's what we're going through for months. That's the whole picture right now. It's not an accident. Don't let your kids see. Don't. This is what we're all busy with. It's like, we're not, let's have some emunas. Hashem gave to me and to you the whole sugya 24-7. We're trying not to look at the news. We're trying. This is the picture. Sorry, this is what's happening. And we're all visualizing. Hard and stark. This is the deepest shear I've heard in the last many years. Not this year, the shear that Hashem is giving for a couple of months now. A shear of, they're back to us. Pull them back, fight for them back. And when somebody comes back, everybody comes out and brings in and pulls in and celebrates. This is like, it's obvious there's a shear going on. There's, you don't have to interpret, say, a pshat is just busy. That's what's happening. They're by us. And the whole, everybody gets excited and everybody cheers. Everybody, yeah, every person, the pictures of G'dayl and Mabshal Alt are going around, giving chizuk, is by us, they're back, by us. Safely, comfortably, by us. So then we're being told something, what that means. They're by us, fellow Yid, they're by us, you're one of us, you're with us. So let's keep to that picture that Hashem just pushed, pushed, brought us somewhere. If we'll keep to this picture, then it's vatucha, then we won. We're yidden. A yid safe by us. Here you're safe. Here you're celebrated. Here you're wanted. That's where we've been brought to, my friends. That's the pictures. That's what we've been shown. Don't think about it. Don't look at it. Yes, look at it. I, I, I don't know which way. I don't know how to, how to get around it. That's the big picture. 
A yid went elsewhere and it was disgusting. A yid under foreign controls, under somebody else's domain, it's such precarious. A yid belongs by the tata, belongs by the mama, belongs by his community, belongs in his... So, that, no, no, so let's go. A yid in shul, it has to be. A yid in shul. I said here many, there's no such thing, you don't throw a guy out of your seat. I was so happy to hear that, that in Eish Kaidish, a beautiful killer, that they have that rule. If somebody davening starts, he has a rule, you're not allowed to ask a guy to leave your seat. It can't be. That he's by us, he's safe. You're here, you're wanted, I don't care. You sit in the rough seat, you stay there the whole time. It doesn't make a difference. You're here, you're safe, you're, you're wanted, that has to be. You're safe, you're valid, welcome. Here you're safe, here you're wanted, here you're celebrated. That's, that's how it has to be. We've been led there, I don't see a way around it. We've been led there, we've been brought there. It's dominating our minds. I don't know what you... What, if there's another pshat, if there's something else, a chap, what Hashem wants, this is just dominating, this is what we're seeing, this is what's happening. People coming home, Hashem gave us a picture of a beautiful scene, we want more, of Yidin coming home. We first had the ugly scene of a Yid away from home. The danger doesn't belong. And a Yid back, to me it's Pasha, it's a piece of Yeshua also. A yid belongs home, safely by the Tata. A yid belongs home, it's Tvarim Pshutim, that there's a Tzipis of Yeshua. This is what's going on, just see the picture, look at the picture please. It's ugly a yid away from home and good a yid home. A yid belongs home, it's Tvarim home, it's good home, it's good to be with the Tata, it's good to be with the Mama, it's good to be with the Mishpacha, it's good to be with Am Yisrael. And then they come home and the people are playing instruments, shooting confetti, it's a ganze celebration, the yid's doch back. He's here, he's back, he's back with the Tzibur. So Hashem should be Mizaka us all. That we should get the picture, but good. The picture that he has seared in our brains, that a yid belongs home with the tata. That picture, if that means, and that's mechazikos, to welcome another yid, we feel it, we feel it in the bones. I, 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 I'll tell you like this, just today I did a trip, the whole yeshiva. I didn't say once, I didn't want to tell the guys in the middle of a war, we're making a trip, it's a chiddush. I just felt the organic response. Every we have a family in yeshiva that the father was nifter recently. The families they're calling each other. The brothers, the brother came to my brother learning out of town. Didn't answer my call for the days like freaking. I said you always call me. I said we never. I didn't speak a lot always. Now we're in a matzah. It's natural. It's organic. The mishpacha is like calling, checking in on each other. It's, it's a natural response. And as in Uma, it's natural, we're just checking in. I, I just, since I'm trying to make gatherings. Just people should gather. I remember I made some early gatherings. They were like waiting, what are you going to say? I gathered so the schmoozing before, I would say. People were like, shh, he's speaking, don't shah. The shah, the shah is like the, was only a trick to get people to gather, to schmooze. The mishpacha holds hands, it's natural. This is what every family does at difficult time. Everybody holds hands. Everybody hugs. There's no, there's no speeches. The mishpacha says, I'm in the speech was Eichetem, so that the mishpacha should be together. Today I wanted this matzah, the yeshiva should come together. The chevra should just hang, just put them in room, just schmooze, skate, talk, just spend time together. People should band and be together. So I say, let's pull in Yidin. Let's know uh, that Yid belongs by us, is safe by us, is welcome by us, is wanted by us. Let's be mechazek that. And the picture that Yid belongs by the Tata. It's a piece of Yeshua. Yid belongs with the Tata. Shem is, 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 is teaching us that, is begging us to notice that, that Yid belongs by the Tata. So I say to all Klaus of Shvizaycha to see the freeing of the slaves and all those that are not yet Aitzia mi maskir nafshi. We say, remove me from my prison, Lahoide Seshemecha, to thank you, Hashem. All the things that trap the soul, that make the soul us so separate from our soul, feel pulled down and separate from our soul, Aitzia mi maskir nafshi, remove me from prison. Lahoide Seshemecha, to thank you, Hashem. A good